Hello everybody and welcome back to RP1. It's been a little bit but there have been several rounds of updates for some of the mods in this and some of the big ones that require uh, some attention paid to because if you do it incorrectly there's a chance that you could corrupt your save file. So I wanted to take the time to really make sure that I, I did it correctly to make sure we didn't lose any of our progress. Because I am getting tired of the sounding rocket stage, we've uh, re we've restarted our RP1 a couple times now, and uh, I just want to push forward. Uh, we've got our RSS reborn set, so uh, yeah, it was it was worthwhile to take the take the second to get it right. Okay, so jumping into our programs, we see we've hardly done any in our X plane. Um, we only have one more left in our suborbital. Only a, a short amount of time left, and we're going to be getting less funding as it goes on for both of these programs. Uh, our early satellites program, we're just getting started in that. We haven't done any programs, but we try, we're try. we going to plan to try to do the all four contracts at once. It's going to be a little difficult. One of the things we need to upgrade or to complete our X-Plane program is to upgrade the astronaut complex. We can afford it right now and we are in a positive. However, we are now going to be making less money as the time goes on. So I'm gonna wait on that. Uh, Hypersonics uh, flight requires um, 12 points and I think I'm going to need that in order to make the progress we need to make quickly enough on the X-Plane program. So I'm actually going to cancel the 1958 solid rocket engines uh, program and in favor of the hypersonic flight. And hopefully we'll get some hypersonic flight data from that which will make up the science necessary to go back to getting the solid rocket boosters because I really like the caster SRBs. I think they make for great lifting vehicles. Uh, it, it's great for quick takeoff. So. Uh, we really want that when we start doing our orbital program. So I have launch complex 2 complete, however, it's a little uh, preemptive because uh, I'm going to need to change that eventually. Uh, so our program, or the contract that we're going to work on today is the Advanced Biological Experiment uh, Suborbital Return. And the best rocket for this is already built, it's the CAM rocket. Uh, it, all it needs is the camera needs to be replaced with some sounding payload to satisfy the contract. So we're going to put in a service module here and I decided to make it a hollow cone. That way I can actually just keep some of the aerodynamics uh, looking a little better. I think it, it makes a difference and so we are going to kind of hide this uh, biological capsule inside as if it were a fairing and hopefully that'll help our aerodynamics. So now we're going to adjust the size of the cone because we lowered the size of our uh, sounding payload area. And I wanna connect this uh, decoupler and hide the heat shield that was there. For some reason it didn't you know, cover. I don't think it was meant to cover automatically or anything. So we just did it manually. We're now readjusting the service payload to make sure that it has just the amount of sounding payload we need, just a little bit over. We did a, a test flight and realized that we are going to need a lot more electric charge than just 19. That runs out very quickly. Uh, we adjust the amount that it can carry. And that was a successful test flight. I was very happy with that, so let's go ahead and tool it. And then at the moment I tool it, I realized, oh wait, we might have better engine configuration. So I find that we indeed do. We have a great engine configuration, so we're going to extend our fuel tank. But then I realized, oh, then we wouldn't be able to use the launch complex. And so uh, so I reverted back to the or original one that we were working on. But then when I went to launch it, the launch complex wasn't good enough at all. Anyways, we would have had to adjust it. So let's just go back. Uh, get the better engine and extend our fuel tank so that way we can burn for the 140 seconds necessary. I think I'm burning less than that but uh, and in doing so in changing the size of the tank it changes our center of mass uh, and that put our center of lift ahead of it so we're just we emptied all the fuel and uh, made sure our center of mass was in front of our center of lift the entire time 
throughout the whole journey so that way we don't have any last minute flips or anything so let's go ahead and put a little numbering decal on it because I like to just keep things organized like that we're gonna use mainly the white outline and then this will be ready to launch and uh, like I mentioned it's gonna be a little bit of a short episode today uh, I wanted to kind of focus on this particular launch and the next thing that we do is gonna be working on X planes so uh, and, and we end up doing quite a bit with that so I'm gonna just dedicate that to its own episode but uh, so yeah so this one's just kind of a short focusing on the last mission in our suborbital uh, suborbital suborbital research program uh, so here we are launching on early day I uh, forgot to adjust the avionics with uh, after I had grabbed the bigger engine and created a larger fuel tank uh, I didn't do anything with the avionics so it has absolutely no avionics control oddly enough though if you notice at the contract window we have the maintained sufficient avionics for the first 50 seconds of flight uh, that was checked off even though we were definitely told that uh, we only have controls for 18 tons and this is a 29 ton rocket uh, and hence the reason why it fell over like that so must have been a bug I'm not sure why but it doesn't really matter because we are not going to reach space at this at this point we're not able to lift ourselves up or anything however I brought up the window for the engine just a moment ago and I was uh, wanting to point out the fact that we're gonna continue this this launch it's already you know even if we revert to the launch pad uh, we would have to just then roll back uh, edit it and then roll it back forward we already have a secondary rocket in the queue so I decided to continue this launch keep it and unfortunately we are going to sacrifice our small little animal uh, for science and uh, for data because by, by launching this rocket and letting it complete its journey we are gathering better data on this uh, engine and I might be using this engine at least uh, a few more times before we end up retiring it and so we want to make sure that we have the best opportunity uh, for our rockets to ignite that they can so this little uh, this little creature will be doing us a service but uh, unfortunately they are not long because they are now part of uh, intercontinental missile or what would have been intercontinental if it had stood up to the heat so all we have left is the the probe core and we don't need to follow that down it, you know it's not going to do us any science it's, you know, it's no good so we just range safety it and we're going to go back to the space center and launch another rocket and hopefully uh, do a little better this time so let's go and we're editing the rocket that we already had uh, in the queue it's not it's partially built barely any and we're just going to go ahead and change the controllable mass. Uh, it's a 29 uh, ton rocket, but we put 31 in there just to cover everything. Uh, and then I had forgotten to tool it, so that's why I'd cancel the, the edits. And so it is now tooled because we may end up doing one or two more of these or using this particular uh, rocket as a side booster for a larger, larger craft. So anyways, here is another rocket and another small animal. However, this time we have maintained control of the rocket and will continue to do so. Uh, and we are going to send it on its journey. We, uh, in our testing, we found that we can come in at both uh, a fairly horizontal angle with our apoapsis only being about 150 kilometers, as well as a more ballistic approach uh, and that would be heading more uh, vertically as our descent and I believe the heat shield that we have is is designed for uh, a ballistic descent I believe that is the first one that you end up locking is uh, I think it's called the Gemini style I'm not entirely sure I would have to look at that the next time we go or uh, when we start dealing with heat shields a little more frequently which uh, we probably will once we 
Once we can get a rocket to go orbital, we're going to try to send one of these uh, advanced biological capsules orbital and do uh, the science that it needs to be done because this, this experiment takes a very long time to gather data. So yeah, once we uh, once we pass about forty uh, kilometers, you know, we're just uh, typically we would we would be heading horizontal at this point because we're our apoapsis just past the Kármán line into space. But this one, I figured, the longer we spend in space, the more data we're gonna get because once again, it's very slow, and we're only gonna get like zero point four uh, data at max from this. But I figured the longer it spends in uh, space the more data will collect meaning that even though that this mission is is solely to satisfy the contract and complete the program we're going to see if we can get the the most out of what we got so we've got a 750 some odd uh, kilometer apoapsis so we'll be doing our experiment for a while as we see from that bottom window it is running and from our contract window, we satisfied everything. All we have to do now is return home safely. And that's hopefully our heat shield and our parachutes uh, will not fail us. And if they don't, if everything goes according to plan, we will have successfully completed another program uh, and we will be getting ready to move on to bigger and greater things. So I time warp and we are now back in the atmosphere. We can only go physics warp. Uh, I was hoping that I could see the ablator on the heat shield, but unfortunately our right click gives nothing. Thankfully, it, our aerodynamics makes it so it pulls us naturally towards the retrograde. And then suddenly our heat shield fails, our sounding payload fails, but everything else seems to be all right. Uh, oh yeah, and our parachute fails. <laughs> So everything except for the parachute uh, is o okay. So the returning home safely is not looking very promising. Uh, we're going uh, at about 180 uh, meters per second in our descent, and uh, uh, we're you know we're slowing down, but not fast enough. And so I'm just getting ready to have to launch another rocket. And then the game decides to have a little mercy on me. Uh, you know, I'm not sure why it decided to. Sometimes it's a bug that, that you know, you don't smash down as hard as you should. Uh, but it successfully counted it as returning home safely. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a win where I can get it. And even though it's not very realistic that that craft uh, should have exploded on impact, the animal should be gone. But we didn't get any science out of it. Um, not nearly enough to make any kind of difference, but uh, nonetheless, we we successfully ran a mission and uh, moved ourselves one step closer towards doing uh, doing orbital program, which is nice. We're gonna keep the we're gonna keep the the program open for a little bit. We're still getting funding from it, not as much as we normally would, but. Uh, and we may do some more sounding rockets, some more science experience, optional contracts, uh, just to get some reputation and, uh, what is it called, prestige. So, so what we're going to be focusing on in the next episode is going to be the X-Plane program. We have a lot of distance to cover before we're anywhere near being uh, done with that, so... Uh, I think we're going to focus on that, and then in the coming episodes, we're going to focus on going orbital. But yeah, we will be doing RP-1 again with uh, some more frequency than we have been uh, because of the update and uh, wanting to keep our safe. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward for more RP-1. If you did, please consider giving me a like, drop me a comment, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.